Hey guys, Arthur Chan here. So today I'm going to be doing a brief explanation on some of the pros and cons between three different types of keyboards. Uh, so just jumping straight into it, we have the membrane keyboard, um, we have the mechanical keyboard as well as the tactile keyboard. All right? So first off, we're going to start off with the membrane keyboard and we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons of the keyboard. So first off, of course, uh, it is cheap. Uh, it's easy to obtain anywhere you go. You can go to any computer shop and you can get it. Uh, it suffice for a general usage uh, since it just works basically uh, like a day-to-day -day point A to point B type of car. You know, it doesn't matter if the car's performance is good or bad. Uh, it just serves its purpose. You know, that's what the membrane keyboard is. Uh, it's easily replaced. So if you break it or spoil it, no problem. Just buy a new one for a fraction of a good keyboard's price. So it's not too expensive. Some of the cons of this keyboard, of course, is it's flimsy. Uh, it's flimsy and cheap, you know, it's basically just plastic. Uh, the key press feels mushy as well. Uh, for seasoned typists and computer users, it actually lowers their efficiency because it takes a lot more force to register one key press. What we call this is the actuation force. So there's no way to customize the keycaps. As you can see, this is what's underneath the keycaps. It's basically just a rubber dome. Uh, it's basically you're clicking on rubber here. So it's really low quality build. Now this is a general membrane keyboard. Right, so moving on to the mechanical keyboard now. Let's take a look. This is a mechanical keyboard. This is what you call the top-notch high-end keyboards of the keyboards. Right, so it's got an excellent typing and key press, uh, giving a very tactile feel and a very tactile feedback. Uh, users can gain a lot of satisfaction when typing on these kind of keyboards. Uh, it improves efficiency for anyone who uses the computer often. So if you're gaming, you're playing a lot, you're typing in the office a lot, you know, a mechanical keyboard definitely it takes a lot less actuation for, for a key press to register. Uh, of course, it will vary between the type of switches. I'll talk about that a little later. But you know, because of that, you know, it helps out in terms of your typing as well. So there are a range of different brands and switches for you to choose from. Uh, each switch has their own personality. For example, MX Blue is a little bit more clicky and noisy. MX Brown is more tactile and versatile. MX Red, which is this one, uh, has a very light touch. It can get a little bit noisy as well, as you can hear from the sound. Uh, and MX Black is of course the stronger version of the MX Red, you know, uh, which means it takes a slightly more force to actually register the key press. Uh, you know, mechanical keyboards are customizable, you know, with different types of keycaps and designs, colors, you know, you can basically design it to fit however you like to do your keyboard, you know, you can make it beautiful in terms of different colors, you want to change the keycaps, it's up to you. Uh, it's also heavy duty, you know, basically it's really made for lifetime usage. So you don't actually need to replace a keyboard, but you know, most often you see people purchasing new mechanical keyboards. It's just because they want to try something new uh, and you know, because they love them. Yeah, so this is, you know, this, the sound of the mechanical keyboard as well as you can hear. Uh, it just sounds real good, you know, it feels good to type as well. So some of the cons of course is it's pricey, uh, it's a bit more expensive, averaging at about 500 ringgit, so it can be a little bit costly for some of you. Um, it's only sold at specialty computer shops, which means you won't really find them in general computer shops. You have to go to specific ones to actually get good mechanical keyboards. You know, so certain amateurs, you know, they might think it's a luxury to actually spend so much on just the keyboard. You know, maybe you might not be wanting to spend so much money on a keyboard. So, so this is a mechanical keyboard. And finally, let's look at the tactile keyboard. So this is a tactile keyboard. This is actually the K10 uh, keyboard here that we have here. Um, it's got a very good touch with a similar feel to the mechanical keyboards due to the specially de designed switch layout as you can see here. You know, especially designed like a mechanical keyboard, however, it's not. It's a good balance between both quality and price. You know, it's priced at 169 ringgit uh, in Malaysia. Between, it, it, it's basically a good mix between a mechanical and a membrane keyboard. Right, so like a mechanical keyboard, it actually requires low actuation force, uh, which improves efficiency in your typing and you know it's more enjoyment as you can hear. It sounds good as well. It sounds similar to a mechanical keyboard. You know, it's also really heavy duty build as you can see. You know, it's a 1.2 kg 
uh, keyboard, you know, really sturdy, really strong, and you know, almost the same as most mechanical keyboards. Uh, it's also customizable as a mechanical keyboard. You can change the keycaps. You can, you know, customize it whichever way you want as well. You can also replace the keycaps if they go missing. So some of the cons, though, however, despite having a tactile and mechanical like touch, it's still not a mechanical keyboard. It's, uh, it still has a rubber. Uh, surface underneath the keycaps. Uh, on strict classification, we have to say it's not a mechanical keyboard. Uh, but for its price, you know, for a non-mechanical keyboard, it can be considered slightly more expensive, you know, to some of the people. You know, they might not still, they might still consider it as a luxury spending 169 ringgit uh, on a mechanical keyboard, right? So this is the tactile. This is the K10. This is the tactile keyboard we have here. So, in conclusion, basically, uh, as you've seen from the three different types of keyboards that we have here, uh, it all boils down to you and your usage. You know, which type of keyboard you like to use, uh, whether you use the keyboard, uh, the computer a lot, whether you use it less, whether you're just using it for you know general usage. You know, it all boils down to you and the different types of fields of keyboards that you like. So, my advice is to go out, uh, test out the different types of keyboards that's available in the market, and get one that suits you. Right, so that's just some explanation that uh, for different types of keyboards in the market, and hopefully we will get more. If this video helped you, uh, do like it, share it with your friends, and yeah, hopefully we'll see you soon.